Hi, and welcome back. Over the last months, I've put together a compact techno case for improvised performances. Today, we'll have a closer look at this system and patch. I call this case my techno case as it's designed for that. But like any good modular system, it's pretty versatile. can also do things like dark drones and rhythmic ambient soundscapes. If you'd like to support my videos or you want to get access to PDF sheets with hundreds of patch ideas I used in my videos, have a look at my Patreon. But now, let's dive right in. Let's start with a quick bird's eye overview of the case. This setup is very much designed to be compact and performable. With improvisation in mind, there are actually very few ingredients. That makes it easy to create a stable framework, control the elements, and organically tweak and evolve sounds. This section of the case is only sound generation. There are two voices, each made with a few carefully selected modules, and a couple of percussive elements. I'll break all that down in detail in the next chapters. This part here is the full Droid Live Kit. This takes care of all sequencing, both melodic and percussive, as well as all modulation sources like envelopes, LFOs, and I even put a CV recorder in there. I will explain how I use it in the chapters on the percussion and voices, but I will also show and explain the separate elements I used. So if you want to do something similar with other modules, you are totally able to do so. Droid is just a very compact and powerful solution for all the things I want to do with this case. Droid also gives me the option to easily exchange the control elements I need. If I want more LFOs, other modulation, or change how the sequences work, I can do so. I did an in-depth video about Droid a while ago. You can watch it here if you'd like to learn more. About the case itself, this is a self-made case, based on a Thon case for the Pioneer XDJ700. These kind of cases are pretty fun for custom projects, but I do have to say this one was slightly smaller than I planned. There was no space here in the middle for rails, like the ones I used on the sides. And this setup you see here is just shy of 82 HP. So I had to cut the rails and fiddle with some pieces of wood and glue to mount this. And I also had to cut out a lot of foam designed to fit the XDJ. So this was a bit of a DIY project. But the result is a very compact and flat case that has a solid lid that easily fits a full patch and is easy to transport. A good percussive section is crucial for techno. In this case, I settled for a very simple setup with just a solid kick and three samples. For the kick, I used the Nobula kick cane. I also already did a detailed video on that, in case you're interested. It's a very good sounding and flexible kick, but as this is meant to be a compact performance case, I also really like the sidechain feature it offers, and I run almost all other sounds through it. I set up this control on Droid to scroll through a couple of straightforward 16-step trigger sequencers and I use the first one to program the kick. Throughout the video, I will build up the flowchart of the full patch. So here's just a kick with a 16-step trigger sequencer to control it. For the rest of my percussive section, I use three samples. I find this gives me the most flexibility when it comes to sound design. The first sample comes from the very powerful I.O. Instruments Himalaya. Among with many things I'll talk about later, it has a section with a series of light samples designed to be used as top sounds for a kick. But they are great for head-like shuffle sounds as well. There's voltage control over pitch and sample select. On Droid, I set up a trigger output with a simple Euclidean pattern generator. I can use one knob to control the number of beats in a bar from 1 to 16 to create simple patterns. I 
I use a similar concept for the head. Only here, I trigger the 4MS sample player. This can be any kind of sound I like, of course. Even things like long, dark, ambient textures. The 4MS offers more control over the sound, like pitch, but also the length and start of playback. Again, I have Droid create a trigger with another Euclidean pattern generator. With this knob, I can go from a minimum of 4 beats to 16. So it's easy to dial in a simple head pattern. Then the sample is sent to the Quad VCA here. I use an envelope with decay control here, triggered by the pattern generator to open that VCA. This gives me good hands-on control over the length of the head. The final element is simple and flexible. I use the other side of the 4MS as a second mono sample player. So again, I can use any sound on that I like. But this time I use a 16 step pattern sequencer on Droid to program the beat. The sample is also sent to a VCA, but this time there is an inverse envelope triggered by the kick ducking the sample. This is great for percussive sounds. but also for longer textured sound. Finally, beside the pages with 16 step sequencers, I set up one master page on Droid. This gives me mutes for all four percussive elements. So let's quickly put that all in the flowchart beside the kick. A Euclidean sequencer triggering a simple sample, the Euclidean sequencer for the head triggering a sample player through a VCA, it also triggers a decay envelope opening that VCA, and finally a 16 step sequencer triggering another sample also sent to a VCA with an inverted envelope closing that VCA. I use the Dubfa Quad VCA as a summing mixer and send the mix through the kick for sidechain compression. In this setup, I send the first sample directly to an outboard mixer. Also, in this chart, I show my core patch, but it's easy to quickly repatch the cables between sequencers and sample players. For example, when I need a custom pattern for a hat. I also have two LFOs and a CV recorder set up on Droid, which I can patch to modulate things like the pitch, sample length, or either sample select to make a sequence more dynamic. Here are a few sound examples with just a progressive section, with different samples, settings and modulation. In my case, I used grey cables for the LFOs and CV recorder. This way, I can easily see and repatch them. The voices are a crucial part of the sound of this case. But again, I kept them very simple and designed them for a specific purpose. The first voice isn't melodic in this setup, it's just a drone. In general, the idea of the case is that it should be ready to go without tuning. Atonal stuff is good and sounds should be sculpted along the way. The sound source of this voice is the chord sample section of the IO Heimalia. This contains a variety of steady chord samples. I then run that sound through separate high and low pass filters from Erica Synths. These have a switch that set them in overdrive and they sound great. For these droning, noisy or rumble-like sounds, 
it's pretty crucial to be able to cut out the low frequencies if you want. For example, when there is a melodic part with a lot of bass going as well, when you want to create more high stabby sounds, or of course you can leave the low end in when you want a massive wall of sound. To get more out of this voice, I set up a third 16 step trigger sequencer on Droid, triggering an attack decay envelope opening the low pass filter. This easily turns the drone in rhythmic sounds. And again, I can use any of the LFOs or CV recorder to modulate the filter as well. By the way, I run the CV recorder from Droid through an attenuator here, before modulating things. This way, I can easily fade a recorded movement in or out. Here is the first voice in the flowchart, the sample chord through a high and low pass filter, a trigger sequencer triggering an envelope modulating the filter, and again the two open LFOs and CV recorder for possible modulation. The audio is sent to the quad VCA as a mixer before passing through the sidechain compression of the cocaine as well. The second voice is melodic, although still not necessarily tonal. The core oscillator is the Dixie 2 but an audio rate square wave from the Himalaya is performing some linear frequency modulation, creating a metallic starter tone. The saw wave from the Dixie is then sent through the ATV project CDVCA, and then the WASP filter. The CDVCA can perform a lot of great tasks, but in this setup it's mostly doing its gnarly distorted thing where its frequency is audibly destroying the sound in a good way. The WASP filter is great to drive the input sound and create more fat filter sounds. Finally, on Droid I set up a simple 8 step sequencer with these small knobs here. But there's also a 16 step trigger sequencer here, triggering an envelope used to modulate either the filter or CDVCA depending on what effect I'm after. Because the step pattern is longer than the 8 step pitch sequence, I can still create more interesting patterns and melodies. The second voice in the flowchart looks like this. The oscillator with some linear FM from another oscillator or audio rate LFO, then through the CDVCA, then the filter, the CV sequencer tuning the main oscillator, and the trigger sequencer triggering an envelope opening the filter or CDVCA. This voice is also sent through the quad VCA for mixing and volume control, and then sent through the sidechain compressor. Again, I can use the three modulation sources to modulate certain parts or repatch things. For example, use the sequencer to tune the CDVCA. I quickly want to show this for people who like it. Here is the full percussive section, combined with the first voice and the second voice. Beside that, there are the three flexible modulation sources that can be repatched easily and all sequences are following the same master clock. This is everything that's going on in this patch. Both outputs of the kick cane are sent to an outboard mixer. One is used to create a mono kick, 
and the other for a mono mix with sidechain compression added. And the one sample is sent directly to an outboard mixer. The outboard mixer is used for a touch of stereo reverb. The one thing I might do in the future is add some mixing power and the stereo reverb module to the case. Then send the full stereo mix through the cocaine. Because I would love to make this case completely self-contained. So I can just plug it in the system and go. All that makes for a powerful case. It's designed to be simple enough so I don't get lost when improvising, but also flexible enough to do performances in different genres. I'll be honest about that, I need more time to practice. At the moment, it's very easy to record a nice clip or section, and I did a few slow evolving 30 minute sessions without problem. But I do want to get to stable one hour improvisations. The main thing for me now is to settle on a few core ideas for tracks, because I have quite some. Then practice improvising with those, and finally making transitions between them. Because there are limited ingredients, each part plays an important role. So I need to know everything inside out, and that takes a bit of time. There are more videos with this case coming soon. If there are specific things you'd like to see, let me know in the comments. But little spoiler, the sample players here are crucial for me. It's great to add textures or sounds that add interest when transitioning from one part to another, and to create a feeling of different sounding tracks. If you'd like to learn more about Droid or watch other Miser videos, have a look here. And as always, smash that like, subscribe and bell button if you want to see more content from me. But that's it for now, thanks for watching and see you next time.